Hello everyone and welcome back to another video covering the possibly the hardest topic in the AQA GCSE Computer Science course. We're looking at data representation today, it's all about binary and hexadecimal and um, how binary is represented um, or how things are represented in binary on a, in a computer. So hard topic, possibly the hardest, definitely make sure you understand everything in this video because this stuff is bound to come up. Um, and it's very important. So let's, um, there's, there's a few things we have to d define first. So we need to look at what binary and things to do with binary are. So binary code consists of two digit digits, zero and one. And they're used because they symboli symbolize voltage with zero being off and one being on. Um, all computers use binary code. It's, it's basically the simplest um, way that, that computers can represent things. Because it's it's like a it's like a a, um, a current when it's off it represents zero when it's on it represents on sorry when it's yeah when it's on it represents one um, and you see this on like light switches and stuff it's pretty stat it's pretty obvious but you need to know the computers work like this using binary code so they use a binary alphabet to represent all data and instructions the specification emphasizes this I, I quote this straight from it um, so it represents all data and instructions in this way they, the computers don't understand what a letter is or um, a word is without using a binary representation to um, to almost understand it so we need to learn the following terms so we need to learn what a bit is and a bit is short for binary digit bit yeah um, so that's either 0 or 1 uh, a nibble is 4 bits uh, a nibble the term nibble isn't used that often but it just basically is 4 bits so um, an example would be let's get my pen example would be um, uh, 0 1 1 0 which incidentally would be 6 in binary but we'll look at that in a sec um, a byte is eight bits or two nibbles, so again that would be an example. Um, oops, lost my pen. Um, example would be um, zero one one zero space one one zero zero. Run out of space on the side there, but usually you leave a space in between um, with two nibbles and a byte, just because it's easier to read and easier to understand. But it's not um, a necessity. Um, a kilobyte is 1,024 bytes. Um, misconception is that a kilobyte is a thousand bytes. It's not. It's one hundred. It's one uh, one thousand two. One thousand twenty-four bytes. Um, then we've got a megabyte, and this is one thousand twenty-four kilobytes. Gigabyte is one thousand twenty-four megabytes, and a terabyte. You get the gist. Is one hundred twenty-four terabytes. So. But basically, the next the next one in this series is 124 times the previous one, um, so it, it gets um, exponentially bigger in that sense. So you need to learn those terms. Um, not too hard to learn, but just just know. And you should you should really know the order in which they increase from kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, and um, beyond that you don't need to know. Um, so. Um, binary code can represent different types of data such as text, image, sound, integer, date and real numbers. So we know from actually the first video on the topic, for, um, in fact the first video in the whole series, that an integer is a whole number and a real number is a uh, decimal. decimal decimal number um, but like I said on the previous slide binary code represents everything and these are just for common examples maybe you wouldn't expect but like I say it represents everything um, so you need to know how it can be used to represent positive numbers up to 255 positive whole numbers so integers up to 255 um, so I'm not going to teach you how to how to um, do binary as such I'm just going to do a few examples here um, yeah so Fortunately, binary code, if you just search how to do binary code on YouTube, you'll get thousands and thousands of videos. It's very um, well documented how to do it. That's how I learned how to do binary code. It's quite, you, you can do it on your own, obviously, but um, it, it's easier when someone else is telling you how to do it. So let's just represent 
very simple 15 in binary code so it's, it's, it's a base 2 um, system binary so you literally you literally times everything by 2 so it goes from 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 32 64 um, 128 and 256 um, so when you, you basically when you get your number you do a grid like this so this is one method to do it. I think it's the easiest method it's how I always do it um, because it's very simple you get your number you, you go along the list uh, does it go into 15 or oh, sorry is fit does 15 go into it no nope. so you put a zero does 128 go into it no nope. put another zero does 64 go into it no nope. 32 no nope. does 16 no nope. nearly though does it eight yes it goes in once then what's our remainder our remainder is seven does four go into seven yep it does and then what's the remainder three so like that so that's 15 in binary just one 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 and as a nibble it's one yeah as a nibble it's one 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 in binary code. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not like I say. I'm just doing it very quickly. Hopefully, you should understand it. If not, watch a video on how you do binary, and uh, that should make more sense to you. Uh, you can leave you can leave out any training zeros. So, for example, if if a question asks you to represent it as a byte, you would uh, make sure it's got eight bits in it. So this is four bits, and obviously a nibble, and uh, like that. Oops, looks like my table has gone walkies. Um, let's do another example. So let's erase that because that's in my way. Oops. Um, okay. So let's do another example. Let's do slightly bigger. So like I say, it can be anything up to 255. I'm not going to do a big one because I, c I can't be bothered to be qu quite honest. Um, so let's do... Um, let's not do 32. Let's do 39. Okay. So again, let's fill out our table. So starting off with one, going to two, going to four, going to eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. So does 39 go into that? Nope. Going to that? Nope. Going to that? Sorry. Does, <laughs> sorry, I'm doing this too quickly. Does 256 go into 39? Doesn't. No, doesn't. So zero. Does 128 go into 39? No, doesn't. Does 64 go into it? No. Does 32 go into it? Yes, it does. Remainder 7. So does 16 go into 7? No. Does 8 go into 7? Nearly, but no. Does 4 go into 7? Yes, it does. Does 2 go into the remainder? So that's 3. Yes, it does. And does 1 go into the remainder, which is 1? Yes, it does. So, um... 39 in binary equals 1001111 zero, zero, one, one, one. Um, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bits and obviously if you needed to do it in bytes you'd do another 3 um, bits at the end of 0 um, so that's fairly simple hopefully you should know this anyway it's just recapping it if anything else um, so now we've got to look we've got to look at a few more ways that binary is rep uh, represented by the computer um, so computers can't work with analog data. So analog data would be an example of a, like a sound wave. Um, so that's analog data. So it must be converted to digital data. So one way this is done is through a microphone. So a microphone converts analog to digital. So an analog sound wave is divided up into lots of individual samples. And when I say lots, I mean 48,000 samples a second usually. So that's that's 48 kilohertz. Um, and each sample can then be stored in binary code. Are usually um, 16 or 32 bits per sample, so that's you know loads um, of bits, um, and it would represent that as probably megabytes, not kilobytes, because it's probably bigger than kilobytes. Um, so, for example, this is maybe this is like um, this might represent two samples. So this might be like a, a tiny fraction of a second, um, and one sample would be this. So sample number one. And this might be sample number two. And the heights of these peaks will be represent rep represented in binary code in either 16 or 32 bits. Usually could be eight, could be more potentially. Um, so, brilliant, that's my phone. Um, so, um, that's that's how it's represented in sound. Um, so, you, you d it doesn't specify this in the spec, but reducing the sample rate, reduces the data needed to store so the, the sound fi file will be less if there are less samples taken makes sense um, but ov obviously the sound quality will be reduced because this is being broadened so the sample might be longer um, in that case you can also uh, use 
Um, you can also represent it in with less bits, um, which also lowers the quality and reduces the file size also. So, you know, ups and downs in that respect. We're also going to look at how um, bitmap images are represented by binary. So, a bitmap is a digital image composed of individual pixels. You also have vector images, but those are different. Don't need to know about them. So, um, all bitmaps are stored as an array of these pixels. We looked at what arrays are in maybe the first or second topic in, in this course. Um, so a monochrome, which just means black and white bitmap, will store one for a black pixel and zero for a white pixel. So I just found this a smiley face in um, monochrome uh, bitmap. So it'd be, you know, here, okay, zero, one, 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 one. So I'm going to just zero etc okay so that makes sense doesn't it I believe um, that's very simple but it gets, it gets far harder when you have a colored bitmap and pixels here so when it when the um, picture gets scanned in for computer um, it, it matches each pixel to a, a color pal palette and um, each shade is represented as a binary number consisting of ones and zeros. So obviously the file size for a colored bitmap would be far greater than for a a monochrome bitmap, um, which makes sense. I apologize for my phone going off, let me just put it on silent. There we are. Um so that's about that's bitmaps. We'll also look at characters. Um again, very long topic unfortunately. So characters um, such as letters and symbols are also represented in binary. Um, so ASCII, that's how it's pronounced, ASCII, um, which stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange, is used to encode text as it associates each of 128 different characters with a 7-bit binary number so a computer can understand the characters. So um, essentially there are 108 different characters, not all of them are visual, like some of them would be like delete. Um, they're, they're associated with a number, a binary number, so the computer can understand what is being given to the, um, given to the computer by the by the input or by the, the the user. So, I think it might be worthwhile just knowing a few of them, just in case it asks you to spell out a word. So, for example, um, cat in binary using ASCII would be this. So I'm not going to say it. Um, so, if if you know the first and the last letter of the alphabet in both uppercase and lowercase and space you can pretty much do everything because you can work out obviously B would be 66 and you know how to do 66 in binary um, yeah and fairly simple but I, I doubt you'll actually be able to have, it will make you spell a word without giving you a character set but you have to know what um, ASCII is what's good to know the limitations of ASCII so because it's limited to only 7 bits there can only ever be 128 characters used I believe there's an extended version of ASCII now, but it doesn't ask you about that in the spec. Um, and also, ASCII is only applicable to the country that it originates from. Um, so, for example, non-Latin languages like Mandarin, so, you know, they would cons they don't use a, a normal alphabet, or normal to us, at least. Um, so, obviously, that couldn't be used. Same with stuff like umlauts in, in um, like, German or accents in French. So, obviously, an umlaut is not on this standard character set so that's a limitation there um, so that's why ASCII's not always used they have to do a special ASCII depending on what country you're from um, a special version of it so finally let's have a oh, actually maybe it's not even finally I'm not sure let's have a look at hexadecimal now um, so hexadecimal is base 16 um, as opposed to base 10 which is binary, di which is normal decimal and base 2 which is binary so this means that base 2 means when you have two digits um, binary you have 10 digits and base 16 you have 16 digits available to you um, I believe I'm, I'm not a mathematician so um, I only know the computer science bit um, so hex, hex people often call it hex um, it's used of computers as it can represent streams of binary numbers in shorter hex digits it basically shortens everything which makes them easier to work with as they take up less space to write or view. And we also make it easier to understand what is happening with computers' data. As for example, this long um, hex number is far easier to understand than this extremely long binary number. Um, so that, that makes sense in that regard, I, I believe. So an ex example question may be um, convert A6 to hex in hexadecimal to binary. Um, so a binary, like we mentioned, is decimal. I believe this actual question came up in the specimen paper they did. I'm not sure. It rings a bell. So, 
yeah, make, that would make sense. Um, so what you would do, um, again, I'm like Barney, I'm not going to teach you how to do hexadecimal. I'm just going to do it um, and just briefly explain it. So I'm doing it similar to how I did for the um, binary one. So um, starting off with one, and I'm going to 16, and 16 times 16 is uh, 256. Let me just double check that. I'm not even sure. Um, 16 times 16. Yeah, 256. And you won't need to go beyond that. Um, then you would do 256 times 16, which is 4,000 something. Um, you don't need to go that far. So you do A6. So start off here. You put this 6 under the 1, and you put A here. So in hexadecimal, like I said, there are 16 digits, or 15 digits, sorry. Um, so it starts off with zero, which means which is the same as zero. One is one, two is two, and it goes all the way up to nine, and nine is uh, nine. But ten is not ten because that's two digits. It's actually a, which is represented with a. Eleven is represented with b. Uh, Twelve is c. Thirteen is d. Fourteen is e, and fifteen is f. I um, know I'm not explaining this too well, but like I said, I, I, I'm not um, astute enough in this area to actually tell you how to do it. Particularly, I'm just showing you how I how it go how my thought process works when I'm working them out. So, um, so we know that a is um, ten. So we can do here. This represents sixteen. Sixteen times ten, <coughs> and six represent 6 times 1 and when you add them together so 16 times 10 plus 6 times 1 let me do that on my calculator um, so that would be 16 times 10 106 oh I can do that on my head can't I brilliant uh, 60, so 16 times 10 obviously 160 and 6 times 1 is 6 so 166 six is our response um, I, I think that's quite simple obviously you can do the reverse process but I would definitely recommend watching videos on this because it is fairly tricky um, and I'm aware that I haven't explained it at all well so, right um, let's have a look at converting this answer in binary back to binary so um Let's do our little table again. So starting from one, uh, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and one, two, eight. Um, we don't need to go any further because this is. I mean, it's already a. Uh, because two five six would be above it, so we don't need to go any further. Um. um so let's start. So 166 is the number we're doing. I bet. Let me do this in a different color actually, because it's getting a bit blurred, a bit confusing. Um, so 166. Does it? Does 128 go into 166? Yes, it does. Does 64 go into? So 128 plus 64 is 192, which is higher than our designated number. So uh, 64 doesn't also go into it. Whereas 128 plus 32 is 160, so that goes in. Um, so that leaves 6. So 16 does not go into 6. 8 doesn't go into 6. 4 does go into 6 once. Um, and that leaves us with 2. And obviously 2 goes into 2. And then we're left with nothing. So that is our binary number 101001110. And that represents 16 in uh, binary so um, definitely check out how to do hexadecimal and binary if you're unsure um, but that concludes our today's video I'm losing my voice because it's been nearly 20 minutes um, but thanks a lot for watching um, and uh, I'll see you for the next topic bye